as if I need any more projects. However, I got the bug. I got the bug, the EME moon bounce bug, right? I had so much fun and learned so much putting that antenna together, a UHF antenna, and bouncing a signal off the moon on UHF that I decided that I am going to make my own 23 centimeter, 1.2 gigahertz Yagi. And I'm gonna make it out of what you're looking at here. This is an old, uh, what's left of an old LFA 4EL, which was, um, I think it was High Gainer Chris Crafts, a four element, six meter loop fed array. And I used that antenna years ago. It's on my YouTube channel, my old house. Uh, I had it on a rotator and um, I worked the world on six meters of this thing. Well, in the move and over the years before I had the tower pretty much finished now, the elements got busted and missing in transit. So I have a 13 foot boom here. And I'm going to take that, 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 and that off. And we're going to use this boom to clean up the hardware in the middle here. But here's what I'm doing. I'm going to show you inside here in a second. I've been 3D printing some options here. Uh, I found some of these online on a free thing. And I'm going to, I've been modifying them. I'm going to get them just right. Which I think I have these as element holders for this antenna. Okay. That one doesn't fit quite right. That one almost, see? And I'm just trying to get it to where it'll be snug on there. And like that. And then I could maybe epoxy it. And the element is going to go on the top. So I'm going to have, what, 40, 50 elements on this thing? I've looked at some antennas online. And uh, some of them are 20, uh, 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 18 foot booms. I mean, huge EME antennas um and many many elements so i'm gonna stick with what i can fit with the calculator online the yagi calculator it starts with a dl7 i think it's it's a 23 centimeter or actually it's a yagi calculator for things like this and um i got it bookmarked but i have to read the whole page again so i figure as this project goes i'm gonna 3d print these okay and they're gonna stay on there and would i want to make it circular polarized i could do one of each like that i could put you know of course the spacing and stuff one element here horizontal one element here vertical all the way down with the driven element down there on that side all the way down here with the directors i don't know if i want to go circular polarized or horizontal vertical like that much like this antenna which is constructed of circular polarization but everybody online tells me 3db is being lost on transmit and receive because of the circular polarization they said you're better off with a linear yagi so I have this bug. When I bounce that signal off that moon to Frank NC1I, by the way, guys, uh, NC1I is a huge station, Frank. I, I think I said in the last video, I, I, I was so excited and I was like, well, you know, I don't think he's a big gun. No, he's a big gun. He's got 48 Yaggies, 48 stacked Yaggies on an array. I mean, it's huge. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to keep playing on the, uh, you know, the settings for the 3D printer because, like, I have one here that's that's too big. It's actually more elongated than circle, whereas these here are about the circumference or, you know, the shape of the boom there. All right. But there's some, some things that I need to tweak on the 3D printing. See, on my messy desk here, <clears throat> what I have is um, what I'm printing. And it is not 100% infill. You can see that. It is pretty hollow inside. All it needs to do, really is hold that element. This takes about 26 minutes on the settings that I've drilled down, 26 minutes to print one. Now, if I get this just right, I'm gonna probably line up and try six at a time, and then 12 at a time. Um, it's not gonna fit that many on the plate. It's the Ender, Creality Ender 3 Max, with a different firmware, because I had problems with the firmware was supposed to be on there. But anyways, um, and I'm using PLA Plus, right? So that, that's, it's not gonna be stored outdoors, it's not going to be in direct sunlight. That one is out there. I mean, all day, every day. It's not going on a tower. So I don't. I don't really think I need ABS because if it works, you know, this will be a, a, a sporadic thing I decide to use, and I'll leave it in the shed or whatever. So it's not 100% infill. It's uh, about 26 minutes to print one of those, and when I get them right, I'm gonna line them up on here on the on the software, write that to the card, and and print. I just hate doing that sometimes because when you go to print a lot of things at one time, 
Sometimes one thing goes wrong and it starts dragging that piece over. You wake up in the morning, there's this ball of goo, which I don't know if I can find the last one I had, but man, that thing is huge. I mean, it's here it is. There it is. <laughs> that wasn't nothing, right? So, um, yeah, I, I don't want to waste too many, so I'm going to try multiple ones at a time. Also, one thing I did manage, which I need to redo. Anybody know what this is? What is that? I know it needs to be the holes wallowed out. There's little threads in there with the 3D print, but you know what that is? I know it's beveled on the side. I never redo it. I didn't have the plate hot enough. That is a 24-pin accessory plug, which goes to my Icom... 471 and ICOM 1271. The 1271 is what I'm going to attempt to use for EME Moon Balance. That's a 1987 1.2 gigahertz 10 watt radio that I have. It's like mint in the box. Bought it at HamFest. Made a video on that. It's on my channel. So you cannot find that connector. Um, and so I'm going to need to print my own like this. And the reason that there's holes uh, only in certain spots is because some of the holes, the whole connector, Printing out all the holes is not, I'm only gonna need some PTT, I'm gonna need some audio in and out. Uh, looking at the manual and online, there's a couple wires that I'm gonna need on this connector. And you buy those little pins where you solder the wires on or crimp them, and then you push them in those holes. And that should go, I wanna get the keyway just right, cause it's a keyed plug. And it should go right in the back of the radio because finding one of those plugs, there's got one guy on eBay that's got one, he wants $110 for it. That's nine. That's ten dollars for the plug and a hundred dollars to ship it because he knows they're very rare. So, um, well, let's see. And we won't talk about the other projects that I have going here. The uh, two meter seventy centimeter cubicle quad, some weather stations over there for Noah, all kinds of stuff. Um, but so another thing I've realized, and let me ask you guys. So you, I, I've learned a couple things online. I mean, I've seen these before, but reading about them makes so much more sense. There's different boom or different Yagi designs. There's through boom, insulated, or like this has plastic insulators here, right? So this is not touching the boom at all. Then you have what I'm trying to do is, uh, you know, on top of the boom here, where it's sitting just on top, that'll be all the way down the top. See, then you have what this one is. This one was not insulated from the boom. This was all metal, all part of the, the boom here. So the only one that was insulated was the driven element down here, see? Because that was the loop that went uh, up over like this. It was a big loop. So do you think it's going to be okay? Because there are some antennas I see online for sale for like 250, 260 bucks. Usually they're in Europe or overseas, but they will ship. And they're like uh, very high gain DX 23 centimeter Yagis, and they're built the way I'm trying to do it is on top of the on top of the the boom like this now you may say well eric this is way stupid um it's never gonna work well that's what everybody said about that over there so i have to do this in order to make you know to learn stuff myself um i mean i've learned so much about circular polarized antennas and how it works on moon bounce and also the difference between this type of yagi and that type of yagi so why not right that's what ham radio is experimentation i've already proved a lot of people wrong so i'm going to try to do it again the only thing i'm worried about is that 1271 that uh, old vintage icon may i mean i'm going to have to put it on the the, the uh, service monitor and see what it's looking like um maybe a little off frequency it's got to be very precise uh it is 10 watts some people say you can do this on yag well, single yag at 10 watts um, but you know, the Icon 9700 versus a 1271, well, that 1271 was made in 87. So there is no way to hook up a GPS to it. And you know, for a reference clock, like the 9700. So I'm not sure, but we're going to, we're going to learn more about it. Um, worst case scenario. Here's what I said about the UHF Yagi. Worst case scenario. This thing is for terrestrial. When I get it done, it works and I'll have 1296. And one day when I get a 9700 again, when I can afford it, I will definitely have an antenna for it. I could put it up on top of the tower up there when I get my rotor up there and uh, maybe sweep around. There's plenty of people around here with a 9700. Not a lot of people to talk to. I mean, what I mean is a lot of people don't, they all think the same thing. Oh, nobody's on 1296. So I always stick with VHF and UHF on my 9700. Well, we're going to try to beat that. You know, I could do VHF. I mean, uh, digital you know not digital 
1.2 gigahertz uh, fall sprint. There's digital modes, you know, VHF and up. I mean, there's a lot of things I could do, but my goal is to be shooting that way with 1296 and that old radio with a 3D printed accessory plug um, and a cat cable made up. To, that thing does have cat control, but I think eBay has a couple cables of someone that's already making those, but I might just buy that. Um, and we're going to see what happens, guys. Any thoughts, any comments, anything that's stupid, please leave it in the comments right below. And um, as long as you don't, you know, there's kids that watch this, man. Come on. Keep the F words and the A words and the R words and everything else out of it. It doesn't need to be there. Um, and uh, we're going to see what happens, man. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm also waiting to get more contacts on this thing. Uh, the moon is at apogee, I guess. And uh, by the time it rises tonight, it's a 100% full moon tonight. By the time it rises, it's going to be 2 o'clock in the morning. So uh, I'll be sleeping. But And nobody's been on the chat. Nobody's been out there. I guess that was the expedition was the best thing for me. So, um, Frank, if you're out there, let's give it a shot again. Um, so there you go. Uh, that's the video of the day. 7-3. From KJ4YZI.